What is up guys, Toasty Bros here, and we are here again with our AMD versus Intel build guide. Uh, we are doing the $500 price range now, so things are going to get very interesting. <laughs> Okay, so I of course chose an APU just because for some reason those fascinate me. I still haven't even actually had one myself, but I've heard really good things about them and I've actually seen some really cool freaking gameplay. So I actually chose the new God, correct me if I'm saying that wrong, God of Very platform. Um, it's basically like the 7, is it 7570? Is that the one I'm thinking of? Uh, uh yes. It's like the predecessor to that, but it's, it's basically just overclocked, but it still only uses 95 watts. Um, which is, you know, really low. It's FM2 Plus uh, socket, which is pretty new. And it actually, you know, it's supposed to be, like, really good. for Especially, I mean, honestly, for gaming. So it has the R7 graphics. And, uh, yeah. All right. So I'll switch over to my stuff. Don't mind the sad kitty. Okay. Um, so for my processor, I chose the really popular now, Intel Pentium G3258. It's a dual core processor, but it's fully unlocked, and people have been getting very great overclocks with this thing. Like, they've been getting upwards of like 4.2 gigahertz on this thing, and it's competing with like i5s and up uh, CPUs, and the dual cores don't seem to be holding it back. And for only $70, honestly, it's a really good value on Intel side, considering Intel processors are normally pretty expensive. But for the price, like, you can't go wrong with something like this. Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna bring up his. Okay, and bam. Okay, and I don't have a graphics card because I chose an APU, which if you don't know what that is, it's in <coughs> CPU and GPU combined. So we're just gonna go straight to what I use to cool my APU, which I use the Cooler Master Hyper D92, which is a lot like the uh, 212 Evo, but it basically has two fans on it, and it looks pretty freaking awesome. If you ask me. So yeah. All right. So let's transition. Okay. All right. So next for me, I got a CPU cooler for mine, which is the Hyper 212 Evo. I couldn't really afford something else, but like this is the uh, CPU I have in my PC actually, and I did a video on it. It's a really nice CPU for overclocks. Like it seems to run very well for my i7, which seems to get very toasty at times, and it's keeping a stable overclock of at least like, I think it's at 4.4 right now, um, but it's keeping a stable overclock with that CPU. So who knows what you can get with this uh, Intel um, G, whatever the freaking dual core CPU, like it's long ass name. Um, like I, you'll get some good uh, clock speeds with that thing. So. Yeah, it was a good value at thirty-four dollars. Oh yeah. Okay, so let's see what's next. So Matt, Matt transition, <coughs> dying. Okay, and for my motherboard, um, these usually aren't too important to me, but I got the I got a gigabit board, which is obviously a trusted brand. I got the GAF2A88. That's all I'm gonna say. Um, obviously, it's designed with FM2 Plus and FM2 sockets. Uh, let's see, it has some 3.0 ports. Uh, it's HDMI compatible. Um, it's fairly small. It, it looks like a micro ATX. I didn't really look at that, but that's what it looks like. Has um, two expansion slots for a graphics card. Um, has four different RAM slots, so you know it's pretty. It looks pretty upgradable, so that's good. All right, so on to the next one. Um, my motherboard is an MSI. H1M motherboard. Uh, it's a pretty nice motherboard for the price at $39. Uh, basically, this motherboard has all that you need. You can uh, overclock it, um, you can do whatever you want on this motherboard. It will be able to handle the um, Intel processor that I have, the dual core. And it'll be able to handle the overclocks very well. And it being a micro ATX, it's pretty compact. I didn't even realize that. But it has the ones, the uh, slots for the RAM. It'll fit everything that you need. And for 39 bucks, you can't really go wrong. It has USB 3. Um, it does all that you need it to for a motherboard. Okay, transitioning. That's pretty good. Okay, for RAM, I went with the, and you're gonna start to notice. A little bit of a trend here with um, 
my color schemes and all that. I went with Corsair Vengeance Pro. I went with two 4 gig sticks, so they run in dual channel. Um, it's 240 pin DDR3, and it runs at 2400 megahertz, which if you don't know RAM very well, that's pretty fast. Um, so that'll go great with the C or the APU I got because those rely a lot on RAM. So it's fast RAM. You know, it's a good amount. Plus, it can run in dual channel, and it looks nice and has the heat fins to help cool it. So that's why I went with that. All right, transition. Okay. So the RAM that I got is the G-Sco Ripjaws X-Series, 8 gigabytes. It's one DIMM, so if you wanted to get another one and upgrade to 16, you could. Uh, basically, it's just basic RAM for 45 bucks. Um, I didn't really go much towards like matching stuff at all. I probably could have a little bit better, but mostly I'm just going for performance here, and that's what I did. So I just got 1600 speed memory, and it's going to work like RAM works. So, yip yip. Okay, let's see what we got next. Okay, um, I think we actually both chose the same hard drive. We got an, <coughs> a solid state hard drive. So if you don't know what that is, it's a hybrid drive. So it's it's still a hard drive in the sense that it sells the moving platter, but it has a little bit of SSD space in it to where you'll still get the fast boot times, and basically you'll still get a lot of the advantages that you would get with an SSD. Now, you know, take for granted it won't be quite as fast, but just kind of think of it as being between a hard drive and an SSD performance wise um, but you know it should basically just help you with all you need and you know for just a little bit extra it just makes more sense to buy a hybrid drive than a normal um, you know uh, uh, HDD <laughs> could think of the name there and then also it saves the money of buying you know a solid state drive especially a terabyte worth of space alright so with my build I did something a little bit different uh, originally, I was going to get a solid state drive, solid state drive, but then I was like, okay, maybe go for a hybrid drive. So then I went into that, and it still was a little bit over my budget, so I couldn't afford it. So this is my okay. The, the, let hear me out, guys. So <laughs> I just put in a basic one terabyte hard drive in this build. But if you wanted to go about ten or twenty bucks over the five hundred dollar limit, you could pull off a hybrid drive. But you'll see why. The, I had managed to fit in an R9 270X graphics card into my build since he's using onboard. I went ahead and put in the graphics card that I use and I can vouch for as a pretty nice graphics card. It'll run all your games 1080p, no problem. Um, and for $164, these prices are going down because the, um, the new GPUs are getting ready to come out from AMD, so that's something cool. And when those come out, these prices are going to go down on these cards. And this is still a really good card for just 1080p gaming, and I managed to fit that in. And with all of that, uh, it's basically a good combo. But if you want to cut back on the graphics card a little bit, you could work on getting um, a hybrid drive, but I really wouldn't recommend that. I would keep the 270X as is because it's a really good card, and it will last you a while. Okay. Yeah, I agree with that. Okay, so for my power supply, I chose a Corsair, of course, because it looks pretty nice. Um, it's uh, bronze certified. Uh, I think it's... is it modular? Can you check that for me, sir? Um, Doesn't matter too much, but I'm curious, though. I don't know. It's not. Okay, so it's not modular, but still um, better than any uh, power supply I've ever had. Uh, 430 watts. That's way more than you need. Like, like you know, like we said, it's bronze certified, so you won't use as much power if you don't need it. Um, it looks pretty nice, and uh, I think Matt might have one, and I think Zach got one too. And I know they're both pretty quiet compared to the one that I have. So, yeah, I have the uh, 500 watt one, and it's worked really well. It's been pretty sturdy. So, is it's, it pretty quiet? It's decently quiet. It's like, I mean, all the other stuff in my system is really quiet in general, but it's kind of the loudest thing in my system, but still. Yeah, my, my power supply is the loudest in my system. Cause, but yeah, that's like, just you, power supplies in general. That's so quiet. Yeah. All right, so I will transition over here. Doo -doo -doo. Okay, so Ooh. next I chose an EVGA 500 watt power supply. Um, and <laughs> a little discrepancy here. Uh, I don't know what 80 plus rating this power supply is, but this power supply just says 80 plus certified, and it's EVGA. It's 80 plus so, white. Yeah, it's 80 plus white. It's a whole new standard of certification. 
uh, but it's a power supply and it works and the reviews seem good with a three year warranty on it so that's actually pretty decent so for the price it does everything it needs to it gives the power to the system and will have room for upgrades in the future so don't plan to do any crossfire with the graphics cards in the future on this kind of power supply but you could just upgrade more hard drives or whatever your heart desires um, and there's good overclocking headroom too so that's that's always good and oh, here we go <laughs> um okay so <clears throat> for my case i chose a diy pc case so i didn't even actually look at what brand i chose but I've actually seen, I don't know if they're new or something, but I'm starting to see more of their cases. I didn't really see them before, um, to be honest, but I can tell you right now that that is a great color combination with the RAM and the power supply I got, um, and you know, also with the motherboard and just pretty much everything, because you know, it's black and green with a little bit of yellow, so I think that's a really good combination, plus it's a mid-tower, I believe. So it'll perfectly fit that micro ATX. It has a see-through panel with the green fans. One of them glows even. Um, actually, two of them glow. Uh, <coughs> it looks like it has a pretty good airflow design. It has an extra 3.0 in the front, along with your you know audio jacks and your 2.0 ports. Um, it has the dampening you know legs. I mean, and plus not not to forget that cool you know tank graphics yeah, or right, whatever it's supposed right. to be. But you know, I mean, I like it though. And for the price, that's like really good. I mean, in my opinion. Yeah. So. I actually chose the same series um, of case, the freaking DIY PC. I've never even heard of them before, and I've been seeing them pop well, up. I wonder if they're new, because I feel like I've heard of it before, though, just not normally. Well, I haven't, so, I mean, mine's not as, like, mine has a better side panel on it. Uh, it doesn't really have all the art and stuff, but it has a more open side panel on it. <laughs> and mine was 40 bucks. Over 40 bucks with a side panel like that, like, that's a really good deal. And... Yeah. Uh, the color scheme is really simple and the case itself looks really nice and sturdy and for that much to have I have it mine is two USB 3 on the front and um, just to have those uh, fans in there they're red fans so you got two colored fans with it and a card reader like that's that's a really good value for 40 bucks like yeah. that's pretty awesome so that's basically our build in a nutshell um, for $500, um, I guess, in my opinion, we can conclude performance-wise, mine, the Intel build, will most likely get more performance with uh, in gaming when it comes to having the dedicated graphics card um, until APUs get really up and above there, which in the future, I think they definitely will. APUs are going to like get up there with uh, graphics cards eventually because they'll figure it out. Yeah, and, dude. Exactly. And once they do... You know, it'll just be APUs for life. But um, <laughs> but like, yeah. For right now, the system I have will probably have the best performance. I really would go with his, with like his whole like color scheme and design. It looks really nice. And even if you wanted to in the future add a graphics card in there, go right ahead. Yeah. And it'll be awesome. So that's my opinion on the build. Yeah. Um. Oh yeah. And then mine <coughs> on Matt's. Um. Matt, you know, that definitely is true about the, the dual-core Intel processor. I've seen, like, really good things about the overclocking with that. You know, the only thing you got to keep in mind is that, yeah, you more than likely would get much better performance with that just because you have the, you know, R9 270X and then the dual-core. The only problems I'd be worried about would be um, maybe bottlenecking. I'm not too sure about it. And then also, um, you know, just making sure that your motherboard and your power supply and your... Uh, fan and heat sink could keep up with the processor because of how insane it can overclock. So, you know, just those things to keep in mind with it. But overall, good build. All right, so that was AMD versus Intel at the $500 price range. Please leave comments below on which you think is the best build. And if you have any questions, leave them below. We'll try to answer as many as you can, as long as they're not repetitive, like we've had in the yeah. past. <laughs> um, but if they do get repetitive, we'll most likely leave a comment answering it so you all can see it before you ask it again. But most likely, you'll still ask we'll it wait. again. We'll wait. <laughs> but most likely, Dude, there's, you'll... A, there's a freaking typo. Do you see the two external 5.25 inch drive? Driv. Oh wait! Whoa! Whoa! See that? Calling freaking new egg. Whoa! Out. These ads up. We're freaking new egg. Like I'm gonna go work for their like 
freaking yeah fix every marketing team here like they're because not doing any obviously so on cue with all our videos and stuff that i mean we'd be good at that yeah right all right so um, yeah check out uh stay tuned for six hundred dollars though because i'm i'm feeling like we're gonna do it i think we're gonna do it six hundred dollars will be nice if this gets the good amount of attention the other ones have gotten so we're gonna go all the way up with this until it's like completely overkill so thank yep. you guys again for watching and have a wonderful day see y'all later